Today's scripture is John 14, 1 to 4, from the New Revised uh, Version. <clears throat> this is Jesus is, uh, speaking to his disciples. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. This is a very popular scripture from the Gospel of John. Very favorite. And I cannot tell you how many times I have used it in sermons. Um, it's one of the most requested texts in funerals. I believe this morning is the first time I will actually preach on this text when it wasn't a funeral or a memorial service, believe it or not. But I think you can see why this is a text that is frequently used at the time of someone's death, because it's a comforting word from Jesus. It's a reassuring word from Jesus. And because when your heart is breaking over this raw, painful loss of someone you love, Jesus is saying the words of comfort that we need we need them. And if you feel that aching loneliness from someone you love's absence, and you don't know how you're going to endure the loss of their touch, their presence for the rest of your life, Jesus is comforting and reassuring us, saying that you aren't separated forever, that in fact, you'll be where Jesus is, reunited in the house of God where that is spacious enough and gracious enough for everyone. But today is not a funeral service. No one has died in our church. We don't need comfort or reassurance, do we? We're not standing in front of a casket or an urn of ashes. But I say we do need comfort. After all, 279,705 people have died in the world from COVID-19. And 78,794 Americans have died in our nation. All of this since December. from this one virus. This virus has stalled the economies of the entire world. This virus has forced us into isolation. This virus has created vast multitudes of unemployed people. And so it does actually turn out that we do need a word of comfort. We do need a word of reassurance from Jesus. And he says to the disciples in chapter 14, he says, do not let your hearts be troubled. And I'm like, are you kidding me? We are, they are, our hearts are troubled. I have days and I'll bet you do too. I have days where I'm just weighed down, simply weighed down with grief for the whole world. That I weighed down with grief over the shortages and the inequities in our care system. I'm weighed down with grief because of the violence and the scheming and the lies. I'm weighed down with grief for the brave people who continue to serve us and yet fear for their own health. I am weighed down with grief 
for the people who have succumbed to this virus. My heart is troubled. And yes, I get anxious. I actually had someone remind me of my own words from a few from a sermon a few weeks ago when I reassured all of you and invited you to remember that you have to let your feelings out, acknowledge them, and let them continue to move through you. I'd forgotten myself. So Jesus is our comforter, and he says, you believe in God, believe in me also. And believing in God for me, and I believe for you as well, it's not an intellectual thing. It's a, it's a gut thing, right? It's a heart thing. It's a feeling and a knowing that's bigger than just something in our heads. It's in our guts, it's in our stomachs, it's in our hearts, it's in our bones. The knowledge that you and I are being held in love. And this is a love that will not let us go. It's, it's my comfort, my belief, and I trust in the wisdom and the goodness that is greater than me, that is huge and mysterious. It, I trust in that love, that mysterious power that moves the world, that spins our planets, and it works through everything that exists. And it comes from love, and it creates love and life. I know this in my heart and in my gut. This is what Jesus says, believe and trust. And I trust in Jesus as well. Because I know that Jesus knows about trouble. Yes, he says, do not let your heart be troubled. But he knows what it's like to be troubled. He knows what it's like to grieve. He knows what it's like to be sad and hungry and sorrowing. He knows what it's like to be betrayed. He will shortly be betrayed by his friends, abandoned by his friends. He knows about our hurts. He is shared in them. He's shared in hurt and suffering and death. And yet he still says to the disciples and to us, do not let your hearts be troubled. If you know me and you know my preaching, you know that I will encourage you to love this world. And I believe we are all called to love this world. I love this world from the science of the cosmos that I throw at you sometimes in a sermon to the glory of the grand babies that we celebrate, from the beauty of music and art that we share, to the soul-stretching mystical communion that you can have when you are in front of a perfect sunrise or somewhere dark and the night is thick with stars. You know I love this world and I believe that God has given us this world to celebrate and love it. But I can also trust Jesus's words when he tells us that there's another place of love, that it is God's house full of rooms, places for us, and that our home is with God. And Jesus says to the disciples and to us in this tiny little scripture, he says, you know, the way there, you know it. Turns out it's not complicated. It's maybe hard work for us. It's the path and the way of love. Love and justice. Love and compassion. Love and mercy. Love and 
love and laughter and love and service and love and forgiveness. This is that gut thing that I hope you know and feel that's beyond simply knowing in our heads. It's in our hearts, in our bones, that we are on the path of that love. And that love leads us home to God. You and I don't have to worry about the place being prepared for us as long as we accept the way of Jesus, the way of love. And friends, I believe and I want you to be reassured as I reassure myself through the truth of this text that love is with us in this pandemic, in this terrible time of losses, in this difficult time of confusion and uncertainty, that love is with us. In this dark time in which injustice and ignorance and inequity are brought into sharp relief through the actions of our leaders and the inaction of our leaders, nonetheless, the love of God is with us. Love is here. God is here. And sometimes, and I have done this more than once in the weeks that have passed, I have said, what, what, what shall I do? My heart is troubled. What shall I do? And my only answer that I have received is love. Love with justice, love with compassion, love with mercy, love with hope, love with laughter, love with service, love with forgiveness. This is the way to the Father. This is the way through this pandemic. This is the way of life. Amen.